Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 13.1. We're going to do the definition of equilibrium, by the way, we're in equilibrium. Uh, definition with graphs, one way equilibrium with examples. Sorry, uh, where was I? Oh, definition of equilibrium with graphs, which I will abbreviate EQ, equilibrium is too long of a word. Um, KEQ, what's the equation, how to find it? Uh, temperature is the only way to change K. Um, what if K is greater than 1, K is less than 1? Examples of writing a K expression. Solids, liquids, and gas are not involved. Why? Oh, just wait and you'll find out. Um, I suppose I have to turn off all the John Dunn for now. Equilibrium. Um, dynamic chemical system where the rate of forward reaction equals rate of the reverse reaction. Dynamic means it doesn't stop. So it looks from the outside as if it stops, but it doesn't. So, for example, there are always 24 people in room 313 at North Campus. Now, that doesn't mean they're the same 24 people. First hour has 24 people sitting in there, and then they leave. Bell rings, and 24 new people show up. Well, actually, 23 people because Joe was absent. And then they leave. And then in comes 24 new people. So these aren't three different classrooms, but it keeps changing back and forth. There's always 24 people, always 24 people, always 24 people, always 24 people. So because people are coming and going at the same rate, that is equilibrium. So if you just took a picture once every hour, you would just see 24 people. And if you say, well, gosh, people all look the same, then you wouldn't know that uh, they're different. Like you might think molecules all look the same. Here is a graph of concentration versus time. So you start off with this guy up here, which would be a reactant because I have some. This would be a product because there isn't any. Oops, i got to pause it again. Okay, well, I have never been interrupted twice in a podcast before, so I've lost my complete train of thought. So anyway, this is concentration, and it changes. The reactants have a lot, and they end up with a little. Notice they do not end up with none. This is a little, not none. Okay. And it doesn't even have to be a little, it just has to be a little less than you started with. Now, this is equilibrium on this dashed line because this is where my slope equals zero, which means the change in concentration is zero. The change in concentration here, the slope of this line, is zero. And when that happens, the reaction still proceeds, but it's proceeding forward and backward at the same rate. Um, the kinetics definition of equilibrium is the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. So this basically, before we're looking at concentration over time, now we're looking at rate over time. So notice how these rea reaction rates, notice how this rate would be very fast in the beginning because I have lots um, that will turn to this, and this is very slow in the beginning because, well, actually it would be um, coefficiently equal. Hey, I just made up a word. Um, and then eventually your rates will be the same. It doesn't matter where the rate ends up. They'll just be the same. Now, types of reactions, I don't want you to think this is another one like single replacement, double replacement, all those things. But we have two main types of reactions we'll talk about in terms of equilibrium. We have a one-way reaction, which goes to completion, which is mostly strong acids and bases, which means that they will um, ionize 100%. So if they ionize 100%, there's no kickback, right? Um, and combustion. So if something combusts, you can't uncombust it very well. The other type of reaction is equilibrium reactions, which is much, much, much more common. Okay. Um, two opposite reactions occur at the same time. First of all, there's dimerization, NO2, smog, dimerizes to make N2O4, and it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. The next one is the dissociation of a weak electrolyte, which would be a weak acid or base. You're going to call it the Electrolyte, you can. Electrolyte means it conducts electricity. So it's a weak acid or weak base. Or saturated solutions. Believe it or not, if you have a little glass of iced tea and drop silver chloride in it, that's kind of evil. But, you know, people would do it. Kenny would do that to somebody. Um, if I labeled these things number one, number two, and number three, and I had some that were dissolved, and I'll make those black, I guess. And I had four, five, and six, and I'm going to put boxes around those. But over time, what you're going to have is you're going to have four, one, two, and then three, five, and six dissolve. So those things will change. You'd still have three um, 
units of solid on the bottom and three units of dissolved on top. Not that it would be 50-50, but you get the idea that it changes. The equation for K, if my slide would change, is KEQ, remember EQ means equilibrium, is products raised to your coefficients over reactants raised to your coefficients. Now, I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to put brackets around it. Remember, the brackets means it has to be molarity. All right, so that's the equation for it. The one product you would multiply it together. KEQ is temperature dependent um, because they have more effective collisions. And remember, the K in rate equals K times, you know, A to the M. If it was first order, this was temperature dependent too. And that's related. If KEQ is greater than 1, so remember K is basically products over reactants. Yeah, there's coefficients here. But if product, if you have more products, if K is greater than 1, you have more products. But the rates would be the same. Okay, so remember equilibrium does not equal, does not mean, does not mean equal amounts. That will almost never happen. When I talked about the equilibrium situation in my classroom, remember there would be 24 people inside and 6 billion people outside. Right? If you are commuting into and out of Chicago, there are 4 million people in Chicago, and minus 4 million is outside of Chicago. Right? So while that still keeps, you know, the amount stays constant, the amount is not equal. The rates are equal. The thing that's equal in equilibrium is rates. KQ is less than run, 1. Remember K over reactants. The way you would have a number less than 1 is if reactants were larger than products. Right? So you have more reactants, so KQ would be less, but you'd have the same rate. And remember, it's at equilibrium, so reactants and products just depend on your point of view. So remember, it's reversible, so it's all going to happen. So here's an example of some different experiments. Table 13.1, the results of three experiments for the reaction of N2 plus 3H2 makes 2NH3. Point one, so this is hard to read on the podcast. You can look it up in your book. Um, I have one molar N2, one molar H2, zero of H2O. And that at equilibrium, once it's done, I get these certain numbers. And you do an experiment, you figure out what those concentrations are. And then your K, remember, is products over reactants. So you get a concentration of a gas, you get a concentration of a gas, you get a concentration of a gas. So it's NH3 squared times N2 to the first, because that's one coefficient, times H2 cubed. Right? So it's products, NH3 squared, divided by N2 times H2 cubed. And when you do that, you get 6.02 E negative 2. So let's start the other way around. If I have 0 N2 and 0 H2 and 1 molar of NH3, then at equilibrium, I'd make all my measurements, and i plug it into the exact same um, KEQ expression, and I get the exact same K. Hmm. Oh, so it should be constant. So if I start with 2, 1, and 3, or start with any other number, my ratio of those things will be constant of 6.02 times 10 to the negative 2. The only way I could change that is to change the reaction or change the temperature. Concentrations of pure liquids and solids are not included in the equilibrium expressions as their concentrations are themselves constant. So remember, molarity is a ratio of moles over liters. And you can change the liters and you can change the concentration of um, aqueous solutions, right? Salt water can be saltier or less salty. Um, gases can be um, a stronger odor or a weaker odor. But if you have a solid, then it's just the density, and that would be a constant. So if KEQ was X, you know, over some constant, you know, over some constant, I'll call that K, what you would basically do is say, you're going to have KEQ times another constant, K, call it K prime, equals X to whatever. Um, a constant times a constant is a constant, and it just absorbs it. I think I said a constant 3,000 times. Write the K expression. For these things, remember K is products, K E Q, and all the K's are the same. Is products over reactants. Um, gases have concentrations. Remember, I'm always looking to see what I can leave off, and I can only leave off solids and liquids. NO2 squared over N2O4. So it's just products over reactants. 
on this one. Um, I didn't give you the states, but you should know the states for each of these. Um, this is acetic acid, um, which would be aqueous. This is water, which I hope you know is a liquid. Ions are always aqueous. So remember, only weak acids and bases are aqueous um, without a charged thing on it. So um, K is going to be products, CH3 Q times reactant, oh, the other products, H3O positive. And now I'm worried, oh no, what if it's not balanced? So I check 2Cs, 6Hs, 3Os, 2Cs, 6Hs, 3Os, and it's all set. And on this one, I have CH3COOH, and I intentionally omit water because it's a liquid. And that's it. Um, the K for this one is simply Ag positive times Cl negative, and I leave out AgCl, right? It would be a constant, so when I do that, you can think of it as being over 1, but don't. It's just done. Okay. The value of KQ may appear to change based on the way the equation is balanced. So before I had N2O4 is in equilibrium with 2NO2. Well, these two are the same, right? You're just going to square root, you know, take them both to the 1 half power. So it's no biggie. Um, so just realize that these are constants. They're mathematically related. Review reactions have a forward and reverse directions for most cases. Really, almost all cases. The only time that, remember, strong acid and bases are combustion. Very rarely does that happen. Equilibrium is wherever the forward equals the reverse rate. It's all about rate. What is equal in equilibrium? The rate. So, K is temperature dependent only. Nothing else changes it besides changing the reactions. Solids and liquids are omitted from K. Um, K equals products over reactants using coefficients. And that is it. So on that happy note, um, I always wanted to like torture someone and like run a 45-minute podcast and just uh, say nothing and let it go. So I think I'll fit it while I can and work while I should. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.